Okay, so here we are with minimum spanning trees. And so we're going to use Prim's algorithm to find the weight of the mini, minimum spanning tree using a table. Because sometimes we're given the adjacency table, and um, it will be good to find spanning tree using the, the table. And so the same kind of premise applies. We were, I'm going to start with A, because I like to do things systematically. And so starting with A is how I always start. And so I'm going to start with A. And I look across the row of A and I find which is the smallest, the minimum value, and that is C. And so I'm going to start off with AC, which is going to be 8. And so I'm going to draw my AC, which is 8. Okay, And then I'm going to scratch out all of C. And I'm going to scratch out all of A. And I'm going to go circle here. This is my first one. Here is my second one. And now I'm going to look purely, I'm going to look purely at C's column, or I'm going to look at A's column here, the ones that are not scratched out. And so I look at these values and I recognize that 9 is the smallest here. So I'm going to go A to E equals 9. And so now I'm going to add on to here, the E, I'm going to add 9 onto it. And so I'm going to scratch out this column. And I'm going to put on E, and this is the third vertex I've thrown on there. And now I'm going to look, also, I'm going to look across at these values for E. And I recognize that these ones here are no longer being looked at. These ones are all scratched out. And I'm looking for the smallest one. So 11, 13, 12, 10. And I can see that there's a 10 here and a 10 here. It does not matter which one I choose to do. So I am going to choose F, and so I'm going to go A to F is 10. And so A to F is 10, and this was the fourth vertex I put on there. And again, I'm going to scratch this one out. And so now I can also consider these values here to look at. And so I will look at all of the ones that are circled in red. I got 12, 14, 10, 12, 11, 13, 10. So again, I have different combinations I can look at. I'm going to choose this one for no good reason. I could have also chosen this one down here. But I'm going to go here. I'm going to go B, C to some value. B is 10. And so B to C is equal to 10. And this was uh, B is my fifth one on there. And so now I can look at these values here. And they are both the same whether I go attach it on to C or if I, uh, it's, sorry, it's B, B, D or B, D. So it's going to go on to here. It's B, D. And here is going to be B, D. And this is 10. Okay. And so let me, so here is my minimum spanning tree is the last one I had to put on was B to D, and I didn't space this out very well. And I add them all up, I get 17, 27, 37, 47. So my minimum spanning tree is 47. And that's how I can use the table systematically to do it. And so each time I scratch one off, I'm taking out combinations, and then I'm looking to at the red circles, or it's adding on the next edge of the graph. And I'm trying to find a spanning tree that captures all the vertices. Okay, so now B part says a seventh vertex is at a G with an edge to F and to C. So here is G. It has an edge to here and an edge to here. And so this to C is 2 and to here is 7. And so this is a cycle, so this is not an actual spanning tree. So I want to know how am I going to affect what's going on. Well, I have to include G. So my choice is I can go from A to F to G, or I could go A, A to F to G this way. And clearly this is the better method going here. But then I compare these two going from G to F or from A to F. And clearly, this is the better path. So I will eliminate this. And my path now goes C to G and G to F. 
And so that 10 that was there got replaced by 9. So a to f is gone. And so I would then have c to g, which was 2, and g to f, which is 7. And overall, this is 9, it was reduced by 1. And so my new overall length that was good for everything is going to be 46. And so we can adapt them as needed um, just by using logic and intuition. And then finally, when given an, an adjacency table, which one may be better to use, crims or cruscals? Well, if you just, this here is all I really need to find the minimum spanning tree. I don't actually have to draw it out all the time, even though I think it helps uh, understand what's going on. And so because of that, finding Kruskal's is you're not allowed to make cycles. That's what you have to look for. And when you're just doing it on the table without drawing it out, it's really hard to find cycles. You can just do this systematically and you're never going to have to worry about a cycle if you follow Prim's algorithm. And so that's why if you have a table, Prim's is probably the superior method to use.